Welcome back, guys. I am down in the waterfront community of Harbor Heights here today. It's uh, north upriver. Uh, it's very similar to Gulf Cove area, South Gulf Cove area. They have a boat launch and, you know, a lot of uh, waterfront properties here. But if you don't have one, you can join the HOA. Use the boat launch. Uh, I've actually sold, <laughs> actually sold this lot here in 2020 for $100,000. And uh, as you can see, some brush back there. That's a scrub jay lot. So they have to come out and do tests and make sure the scrub jays are safe in there before they'll let you build on it. And I figured I'd come down here today, one, just walk through the waterfront, but I remember distinctly selling that lot for $100,000 and the county property appraiser called me and said, hey man, you know, cause at the time it, it was a high price, but the buyer saw the value, uh, saw where the market might be going. And they called me up and said, hey man, why'd he pay so much for that? I'm trying to justify it. And I said, hey, that's what he wanted to pay. That's what they were asking. And now those lots go for 300 and there's one down the street for $315,000. So that's how, you know, and I thought at the time, I thought it was a little pricey at the time, but now <laughs> there's actually two down the street for over 300 grand. And as always guys, before we kick it off, if you like this video, please consider subscribing, helps the channel out immensely and we'll get right into it. Getting into other local real estate news, I've been telling you guys about the condos here that have been slashing prices drastically. They, uh, the new build condos actually recently dropped down in the 260 range and man, they are selling out quick. Uh, that's something to keep in mind when you are shopping down here. There is a floor. There's, there's going to be a floor. I don't know if 260 on these condos is the floor, but they went from 330 down to the 260 range. And that seemed to be enough to get a lot of people off the fence because they listed about nine of them and six are pending. So that was surprising to me. Like, you know, guys, we always try to figure out where is, where is that price floor going to be? It's hard to tell. And that may surprise some people because of all the condo issues we have, but these are brand new. They're not over three stories. They're only two stories. So not really subject to the, uh, rules and regulations that the others are seemed seems like it's a pretty good deal for some people and yeah I'm talking to my buddy up north it's not just Florida dealing with these condo problems guys I have a friend who has a relative in New Jersey who is getting smashed with assessments on their condo similar to what we're seeing here it's not so much insurance but just deferred maintenance they've lived there for 30 40 years and now the bills come and due. unfortunately this is not just a Florida thing. This is happening around the country right now. It's been, you know, decades, decades of deferred maintenance and keeping HOA fees low to keep people happy. And this is the end result. I appreciate everybody who comes in the comments and has served on a board and puts their input in because, you know, it's at the end of the day, it falls on the residents to approve these repairs, approve these budgets. And sometimes you can have a board uh, or you know, a couple of people on the board that really do want to get this stuff done. They want to keep the budget tight. They want to make sure everything is getting repaired and you know, the community votes it down. So sometimes I understand it's frustrating and it's out of their hands, but it's not just a Florida thing. The insurance here obviously is our biggest obstacle, but that's also going on all across the country. I mean, California, Colorado, I'm hearing condo fees skyrocket in Myrtle beach because even there, everybody's insurance is just going up and, when you think about it, if a condo fee has been $250 a month for 20 years and it goes to 600, I mean, that's just kind of tracking with inflation guys. That's unfortunately, that's going to be the new scenario. And the only th that's not, they're not coming down. They're not going to come down. I, I anticipate anybody who buys one, I tell them probably only going to go up over the foreseeable future. And the only thing that can move is the condo prices to adjust for that. Right now, as you guys know, we're out of season, seeing a lot of builder move in specials, uh, more so than I have in the past, but a lot of it's like villas, a lot of villas they're trying to move just up and down Southwest Florida coast. So single family still seems in high demand, also depends on the community you're in. But as I've mentioned before, building 10,000 homes in the burnt store area down there and South of Punta Gorda, it's technically still Punta Gorda, but South of Punta Gorda city proper. And Taylor Morrison just came out and was like, yeah, we're gonna drop another community down here. So <laughs> I think it's Esplanade at Starling. I, I, for Punta Gorda, I tried to find information about it. Gonna be big, big time resort style stuff down there, which is kind of the trend of what they're doing all up and down the coast right now. It seems to be working for them. Um, couldn't find an address. They were like, to be determined. I'm like, oh, this is very preliminary, but doesn't look like 
they're going to stop building anytime soon in this area either, which is really helping uh, put pressure on resale prices. We're just building so much here and they're becoming such a good deal that it's really putting pressure on the resale market. This is what we've needed. We need more housing. We need more housing and some people are like, well, they're building too much. And in some articles they do say that they're cutting back across the country. I don't see it here. I don't see it here yet. You know, there's some uh, phases of projects I'm keeping an eye on that haven't opened at this point that I would, but, but some of them have too. So they seem like they're just, this is full steam ahead. They're going, they made their decision. They're building these things. And again, it's gonna really reflect the resale market. I pulled all of the active listings in Sarasota County, Charlotte County, everything, townhomes, manufactured homes, single family homes. And I was surprised to find that in Sarasota County last month, about 13% of those are getting taken off the market. In Charlotte County, about 10%. So that means they're either not selling, they're being withdrawn, they're being canceled by the owners. Um, and I said, holy cow, 10%. You have a 10% chance of your house not selling. That's rough. And then I was like, oh, wait, that means you got a 90% chance of your house <laughs> selling. But technically, that's not even true. You have a 90% chance of your house staying on the market right now because that doesn't mean it's going to sell just because it hasn't been removed or expired. I took a look at the pending, the number of pending sales for the past seven days. I tracked this pretty much from Venice down to Punta Gorda. And on our pending, it looks like, it looks like right now it's taken about... 80 days, the median time to sale is 80 days on our current pendings. It's actually 118 for the average. So on average, everything that we have under contract right now in most of Southwest Florida, my area, is taking almost uh, three and a half months, almost four months to get a contract on it. And that's probably after some price drops and price adjustments, but it's it's very drastically different than it was last year. That was much lower. And right now, guys, we have three distinct markets down here. Anything under 250, even if it's overpriced, really, I mean, pretty overpriced, is moving. That is starter home territory. That is, all right, I got 250. This is what I can afford. It's actually, that kind of stuff is doing pretty well. I don't agree with what it's selling for, especially as a price per square foot. It's very high. You'll get these 1960s, you know, two bedroom, one bath, 700 square feet with a carport. Are they redone interior wise? Yes. Yeah. I mean, who knows if they were an Airbnb, but someone came in and did redo them. And, you know, you slap 250 to $280 a square foot on this thing and, and someone gets it because the, you just can't find, I guess, a half remodeled house for 250,000. Obviously you guys know the upper echelon over seven, over 800, not really as price sensitive. What's getting hurt right now, what's getting killed right now is 300 to about 650. In that price range, very hard to one, compete with new constructions at those prices. That, <laughs> and every day I see more and more new constructions go under contract. Very hard to compete with new construction at those prices. When you get a 2,000, 2,200 square foot house for 360, obviously you're not gonna get a pool, but, <laughs> you know, and the two ones are 250, you can see the discrepancy that I'm talking about there. You are having a hard time mortgaging these. Obviously, interest rates just keep climbing. I think the fantasy that those are going back down this year is starting to slowly fade away. But we'll see. Who knows? Who knows what the media says? Um, I never really thought that was going to be the case. So 300 to 600, really tough because if you have a cash buyer, one, they want a deal in that bracket. They're going to negotiate pretty hard. You need a pretty specific property to really get top dollar. And if you don't want to play ball as a resale, they'll take their money and they'll go buy new construction and they'll have lower insurance and they'll have a brand new house in that price bracket. If you're looking at someone who's getting a mortgage, really hard to swing stuff. I mean, Without like a 30%, 35% down payment, it's pretty tough to swing anything over 400 grand right now. You know, when you get into five, $600,000 houses, your mortgage taxes and insurance, you could be looking at $5,000 a month. And that, that's me being kind of conservative. And we get a lot of blame on the interest rates. Everybody rushes to the interest rates articles coming out. Why are sellers lowering their prices? Oh, we're blaming interest rates because the prices are too high. The interest, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the answer. 
Um, but it's just a sign of the economy as a whole. Things are weird right now across the country, especially here in Charlotte County too. Our new Sunseeker Resort, which uh, I don't know, always seemed like a long shot to me. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll pick it up, put it back together. I hope they do. Uh, was reported they lost $30 million in their first quarter, which they had no idea they were gonna lose. Uh, so, I mean, if you go there, it's quite expensive to stay. It's even more expensive to eat. Locals kind of go once and then usually don't go back. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that turns out. Losing uh, Red Lobster at our mall, which is already suffering immensely. As you guys know, they tried to buy out Macy's and turn it into apartments, but haven't seen that materialize yet. And I, I still don't think that's gonna happen. So just all this stuff kind of melding together. These are just kind of signs of the economy on a whole, obviously not an economist guys, but you can look around and see this stuff. Uh, another thing coming out now, the schools in Welland Park. I had talked to you guys about this a while back. The, the middle school, I think the high school, uh, they're all getting delayed. And they're saying, one report was it's because of due to demand. So, which is funny because Northport High School is overcrowded and we need another one. But, you know, when you're building a school in a community where the average sales price is like $750,000, not a lot of families, guys. Not a lot of families gonna be moving in there on Florida salaries. I mean, maybe someone would come down to Welland Park and commute to Sarasota, maybe, I don't know. Seems like a long shot to me. So I think that's probably partly to blame for the anticipated low enrollment numbers. You just have, it goes back to everything. It's not the interest rate, guys. You can buy a seven, you know, you could buy a three, 350 house at 7% interest and make it work as a family. But when they start at 750, you're not even gonna look at that community. And the solutions are just as bad as the problems. One county on the East Coast just reported they're gonna do like a Homes for Heroes kind of thing where, you know, you basically can get a government assisted down payment. It goes on your house as a second mortgage, almost like a second lien actually. You know how many of these grants they're giving out? Five or six in an entire county, a very populated county. What, what kind of crap is that? What is that going to do? Like, <laughs> you can go and say, oh, look, we helped, we helped these five or six people and they jacked the house prices up and you shut out everybody else. It, it doesn't make sense to me. These solutions are so stupid. No tax rebate is going to help anybody. No second lien, free down payment. No interest is going to help anybody. It's going to put people in a house. Don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, I don't think they're going to be very much better off. <laughs> <laughs> the realization must much like the rents now guys sort of sweeping over the state is oh asking prices are too high things are too high and there's too many options so the cure for high prices is high prices and high rates as you guys can see some of these waterfront homes get pretty elaborate get pretty nice uh usually get between 70 to 100 feet of waterfront really depends on wow that thing's got a whole whole second floor dock that's pretty cool, depending on how many lots it's sitting on. Um, you're up the river a little more, but you know, if you're just looking to get out and fish or you wanna take, you know, just a few hours on the boat, it's pretty good. Getting out to the Gulf is gonna be a little bit of a trek, so it's something to consider up here. All right, guys, that's what I got for today. If you like this video, give me a like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.